Hi everyone. I'm not sure how many are here just yet, but I just thought I'd pop on a minute early uh, just before we get started and say a quick hello to everybody. Uh, welcome to a Lincolnshire Fen Crafts needle felting tutorial. Um, I've got the dog in the background, hopefully uh, <laughs> she'll be quiet, but she is in the worst mood because I have not invited her tonight. She's fuming. Um, so let's have a look. Anyone's on? Yeah, here we go. Hi, Sharon. Sharon, hi. <laughs> Hope you're all right. Yeah, okay, so I've got a few people hopping on now. So tonight, um, this is what we're going to be making. We're going to be making needle felted fairies. Um, I've, I've sent quite a lot, I mean, loads of fairy wool packs out, but if you've just got your own wool stash, you work with whatever you've got, you can do whatever style you like entirely up to you there's no right or wrong it's going to be really simple and um, we're going to have a great time a really good 90 minutes um, should take around 90 minutes shouldn't really take any longer but um who have we got erica Fay, julia watkin yeah hi julia yeah great to see you all you're all hopping on now amanda jane pink fairy kit at the ready yeah linda Coxon, they look lovely. They are, they're really easy to make. So I like say, the, the thing with these is you can just grab whatever you've got in your wool stash. It really doesn't matter. We're gonna be using a couple of, uh, two or three pipe cleaners. So um, I'll show you how to wrap the wool around the arms really quickly, really easily. No need for wax or glue. Um, you know, keep it really, I'm all for keeping everything simple. So that's how we're gonna to work tonight. So wake up, hi Sue, newbie, nice to see you. Claire Leavers, hello from Woodall Spa. Hi, Angela Wilkins. Hey, you made it, you made it. That's brilliant. Poor Angela. She's tried twice now, I think, um, but here she is tonight. Um, Danielle Martinez Spitz, hi from Holland, from Danny. Hi, Danny. Nice to see you all. Um, just before we start as well, I just wanted to let you know there are some other um, seasonal workshops that I have available on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook, but they're all on YouTube. So uh, this week I've just put on the penguin tutorial. So really quick and easy way to make this little needle felted penguin, which is, is super easy. And then if you were here previously, you will know that we did the, um, the Nordic gnomes. So that's on YouTube as well. So you can follow me, um, follow along on that. Make sure you subscribe and then you'll hear as soon as my new tutorials come up because I'm doing quite a lot of them. So that's the, the gnomes, really easy again, about 30 minutes from start to finish, so easy, just such a great festive craft. And then the, the needle felted snowman, which we did just recently, again, uh, really simple techniques. And then I showed you how to, to really um, uh, create that nice smile so that it's not too um, sinister, because they can look quite sinister if you're not careful. So um, those are the workshops, uh, the festive ones that are available on YouTube. There's lots of others, how to make a needle felted hair and sheep from start to finish. There's a series of tutorials there. Um, who have we got? Abigail Roberts. Hi, Abigail. Hi, lovely to see you. Uh, Dana Piglison. Hi, Gloria here. Nine years old from Romania. Hi, oh, hi, Gloria. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, that's so sweet. Hi, Anna. Anna from Blacksmith Shop Crafts. If you ever want to do some great workshops when we're eventually open again, get in touch with Anna at Blacksmiths because she has some amazing workshops. Ready with the bits and bobs. Abigail's <laughs> asking if it's possible to make two fairies out of one kit. It is. I was about to get to that. Yes, Abigail, it is absolutely possible to make two fairies out of one kit because these are quite large. Um, so you can easily, and I think I put enough pipe cleaners in for two fairies. So if you want to just reduce the size, then absolutely make two fairies. You could probably even make more, um, but definitely you can make two fairies if you've got the wool fairy pack. Do you sell the um, roving? Is this what? Yeah, it is. It's called well roving or wool top. Yeah, it's all in the shop. I've put my shop link in the description. All the wools that I'll be using today are available in the shop, just about, I think. Yeah, they're all available in the shop, um, so you can just pop across there. Like I said, the link is in the description for the website. And Penny Kitchen, oh, hi, Penny, good to see you. Penny Kitchen is here. Uh, Emma Aitchison from uh, Embroidery Scotland, hi. Sandra Daly, hi. Oh, oh, there's so many people. There's so many people, lovely. Hi, lovely to see you all. 
Um, so yes, you can definitely make two out of the, the fairy wool packs. Okay, so this is what we're going to crack on with today. Um, so I think we're just about ready. I'm just going to give it one minute more as other people are joining. So we've got quite a few on now. And we'll get going. So the first thing we're going to start with, we're going to actually start making the arms. So what you need first uh, in front of you is one pipe cleaner. Pop those down there. And then... Yeah, I do not have a kit, but I have some white and brown roving and a stabber. Yeah, that's all you need, Claire. All you need is some wool, a needle, and something soft to felt on. Hi from Atlanta, Cindy Cox. Joe Rimmer. Hi, I have my pack already, but now, can't do it now, but we'll watch. Yeah, it'll be on YouTube, so and it'll stay on Facebook, so you'll be able to watch the replay. Karen Scott from Tip Tree, <laughs> where the jam comes from in. I love Tip Tree jam. Uh, hi, Sue Ferry. Hello. Oh, right, okay. I'm gonna, I'll be here all night, so I'm going to pop you down. And there we go. So as you can see, I've got all my bits and bobs ready. And the first thing we're going to do is start with the arms. Now, I am using just a normal tobacco pipe cleaner. And the reason I like these is because they are covered in cotton. And that cotton means that you can wrap your wool around it without having to use any wax or glue. It just sort of sticks to it really really easily um, and but you can absolutely use wire I like to use the floristry wire which is paper covered again that negates the need for for too much messing about basically so you can just get wrapping and what you're going to do is as you're wrapping we're just going to wrap it really tightly and just sort of rub it with our fingers as we go but I'll show you how to do that it's really easy now don't worry if you get behind um, because I will pop up and, and talk again so you'll be able to catch up in between and don't forget the replay is going to be available as well so don't rush it um, some people work at different speeds don't rush it just take your time it's supposed to be enjoyable um, that's the whole point we're just going to really sort of creative festive 90 minutes um, of brilliant creativity and that's what it's all about and it is definitely what we all need at the moment um, it's been an absolutely rubbish year so here's to a better 2021 okay what I've got here for the arms is this sort of light skin tone color um, but you can use anything you like um, these this is really nice this is a carded wool I've got this is like a light brown that's really nice as well so you can use any color you want but I'm sort of just going traditional because this is what we tend to see now I am not reinventing the wheel here making these fairies if you go on YouTube there is a dozen and a half videos that you can watch I just thought it'd be really nice I get a lot of requests um, just to go through the techniques and answer your questions as we're going so it gives us a really good opportunity to answer any issues or questions that you may have so this is nothing new you must have seen them everywhere I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible because that's for me that's the whole point of of creating it's not to to get stressed it's about building your confidence and and enjoying it if you don't enjoy it what's the point okay so whatever you are using if you've got your wool packs you will have this color in there and you are just going to take and pull a thin a really thin I mean really thin can you see that piece of wool off in one length it doesn't matter if it splits don't worry about that and that is what we're going to use to wrap the arm well the arms but one pipe cleaner is going to do two arms if you're doing if you're doing something really big and you want the arms to be a bit longer what you can actually do is put two pipe cleaners together like that and just wrap them around each other but um i'm going to try and keep it quite small so here we go we've got the end here we're going to felt very little we're going to work with our hands so we're hardly going to use a needle at all so what you're going to do is you're just going to hold that there, find whichever way is comfortable for you. I might turn it around that way. And then, can you see, I'm just wrapping that round there. Just wrap it round a little. Don't do anything with it. Just keep it firm. And then bend over the end just slightly. You don't want much. You want about half a centimetre bent over. And the reason we wrap it before we bend it over is... Can you see that the bend is actually now covered up? So we don't have to mess about with that. Makes it so much easier. 
and then just continue to wrap it round and start to work all the way down to turn my hands again can you see that so you're just going to hold the end keep that wool in between your fingers nice and firm and just twizzle it keep it flat you don't want it bunched up but just twizzle it because these fairy arms want to be really slim you don't want big sort of Popeye arms um, so that's why we keep it nice and slim and and that cotton pipe cleaner or if you're using say something paper covered it will just hold on to it really well and look I've, I've, I've never even picked up the felting needle yet so we go all the way down here now you're probably going to have quite a bit of excess and we want to get rid of that before we actually get right to the end so you see I've got quite a bit there and I don't want quite that much because I don't want one arm bigger than the other we've got a quick question from Tracy asking what's in your hessian pillow right this is just filled with rice this is um hessian I haven't got any in the shop at the moment because I'm having a problem because of COVID um, getting the right hessian. I know it sounds really funny, but um, if, you, if it's too thick, then it just blunts the needle. If it's too big with the holes, um, then the rice just eventually comes through and it breaks really easily. So it's a bit like Goldilocks and the Three Bears getting just the right hessian. Um, but yeah, um, a, a shopping bag supermarket shopping bag that's what I first use they're really good so if you've got any of those lying around and then just fill them with dried rice all I'm going to be using as well is a standard felting needle so it's quite a quite a solid felting needle you don't want one that bends too much so this is a third size 38 the higher the number the finer the needle so you want a 36 or a 38 um, to be to be working with and that's just a really good all-rounder okay so I'm just going up here now can you see just before I get to the end I'm going to bend that over again like I did at the start and I'm just going to wrap what's left around the rest of the arm can you see and I'm just pressing I'm just holding it quite firmly and turning and now can you see I've not even used a needle on that and you've already got one really nicely wrapped set of fairy arms and that's it that's all you need to do and that process is pretty much the same for anything you make if you're making something thicker then obviously use more wool but that's basically it if you're using something thicker you would probably want to go along and just felt some areas in so um, it holds properly and doesn't come unstuck but can you see I've not needed any wax, I've not used any glue, I've just used my fingers, not even used a felting needle and et voila, there you have it. So that is your set of arms. Terry just wants to check what we're wrapping the wool around. The pipe cleaner, just one pipe cleaner or um, floristry wire or whatever wire you've got. Is there any other questions coming through? No, there's just people saying hello. Oh yeah, Terry. Terry's a bit late in yet. Yeah, yeah. I see Terry. Yeah. Okay. All right. So everyone okay with that? Hopefully you are all. Give me a thumbs up or something just to let me know. So next, pop that to one side because we're going to come back to that. I'm going to take your second pipe cleaner or piece of wire, exactly the same size. You might be working with something longer. Doesn't really matter. And then we're going to take, if you've got a furry wool pack, in there you will have, this is um, wool tops or roving, as most people know it. And I am using White Jacob because it's a nice, coarse wool. You can use carded wool for this, works just as well. But I, I like working with this Jacob wool top because it's a really nice, coarse wool anyway and it felts really easily. Most of it's going to be covered up. And then all you're going to do, when you are pulling wool apart don't hold your hands close together because it's got fibers that lock in and what they do is if you do that they will just grab hold of each other and become really really strong what you want to do is just pull your hands apart and just gently pull and it pulls away and that's what we have there and this 
we are going to start with. This is actually going to cover the head when we've created the head because it's going to leave, it's going to be really smooth. So it's going to just pop over the head and you're going to have a really nice smooth finish. So you take your pipe cleaner. Anna wants to know how long are pipe cleaners of your standard length? This one is, how long would you say that is? Maybe 15 centimetres. 15 centimetres. Depends what you're working with. You might have some craft pipe cleaners which are really long. Um, so it, it's, but that's about 15 centimetres. And also if it's quite flimsy, your pipe cleaner, some of the craft ones can be quite flimsy. Double it, just fold it over and double it. That's, that's absolutely fine. Don't be too precious over it. And don't worry too much about the length of this one um, because it doesn't matter. So pop your pipe cleaner down. You don't have to use a rice mat, by the way. I use both my foam and my rice mat. And I like to put a bit of felt on. I'm just showing you for the contrast on here, but normally I would work with a bit of felt on top of the mat. Because um, it protects the mat and it just makes it last so much longer. So pop your wool. Top of your pipe cleaner there and just fold that over. there and then just wrap that around okay if you've got a particularly long pipe cleaner then just double it over either way it doesn't matter you can still do that with a smaller one as well So then you catch the wool in between and then just wrap that around just to secure it and then forget about that. Now we're going to create the head first. So we're going to pop the head on here. You can um, make the head separately. I've done that as well, but I just think this is the easiest way to do it because it's then it's attached to the wire and it saves messing about. Um, so again, wool top your white wool top or whatever colour you're using and you don't want it to be too thick so just split it down the middle lengthways like so and then I've got quite a lot there so I'm just going to take a little bit off remember with needle felting you can always add but it's a bit more tricky taking it away now you can just wrap it round and felt it but I like to to speed up the process and I like to tie a knot in the wool so can you see I'm just tying a knot oops I popped out there so tie a knot you'll see this done all sorts of ways on the internet it's just there's different ways of doing it you'll find whichever works for you it's it's not reinventing the wheel tie that in a knot there so can you see that's nice and firm so what you're doing immediately you're creating a nice firm center Okay, so you've tied the wool in a knot there and you've created a nice firm centre. No need to do any felting. Flip it over and tie a knot at the back as well. You should only need two knots at the most. And if I'm making animal heads, you'll see on my other tutorials, I all, I, I do tend to, to tie knots in because um, it just, it means that you've immediately that center is nice and firm and it just reduces the felting time and if you're struggling to get it nice and firm it's already there and done so just pop one out of the way and just take one strand hold it firm and just wrap it round like a lollipop you're making a lollipop and you see and then just pull it round and where that edge is that end just take your needle, just in the top layer, and just so it tacks on. And any loose bits, you can just use your needle to lift and pull those up. So you'll still have this other tail sitting here. You don't want this head to be too big. So if you think you've got a lot of wool here, hanging over and you think it's going to, the head's going to be really big just do what I said before just pull some off gently 
don't um, don't tug at it just pull it gently away hands apart hi Fiona Griffiths nice to see you here so can you see these are the two bits that we had at the beginning we're going to use those to bring those down over the head so don't worry about any lumps and bumps it doesn't matter this is going to be covered up you're not going to see this we're just creating a nice firm shape underneath and I'm just looking at this and I'm thinking is that going to be too big but I don't think it is I might just pull a little bit off at the end there just to reduce it slightly so we do exactly the same but with this strand here wrap it round nice and firm it's a bit awkward but you'll find a way of working and just pull it tight you want it loose because the tighter it is the less felting we have to do and then the faster it's all done there we go and then just those ends catch those with your felting needle and don't worry about any wispy bits it doesn't matter so you've kind of got a, a lollipop but do you see how actually tying those knots to start with speeds up the process and it makes sure that you've got a really nice firm shape to start with because we're going to be putting some details on this face at the end and what we don't want we don't want a sort of squishy face that is going to distort there we go can you see what we've got there so we've got a nice shape here just make sure here you hold it in your hand be very careful don't stab yourself make sure you've got all those loose bits underneath tucked in and felted in and if it's a bit big that also reduces the size and just use your di uh, needle diagonally as well if you want to catch those edges because the center is quite firm now so if you stab directly into the center then you're going to be felting within the center but if you go diagonally then you're going to be firming up all the sides of the felting area and just sort of tidying it up the great thing about jacob wool as well is it it shows um few to sort of no needle marks at all which is another reason i like working with it so there we go you should have something like that how are we doing Oh, Penny. Yeah, that's f Penny. That's fine. You can watch the replay. Don't worry. Okay, so there we go. Now, take your arms here. Pop them through the middle. Can you see this? You've either got a bit there, or you might just have one long bit. It doesn't matter. Um, so if you've got the two bits sticking out like that, you can just wrap them round like so. Or if you've just got one long bit, then you can just wrap it up like so. So take the arms, find the centre roughly, hold and then twizzle the excess pipe cleaner that's coming from the head just to secure. And that's it. And you see there, and that will stop wobbling around because we're going to pop some wool on it. Okay. Everyone okay, hopefully? Good. Right. Okay, so there we go. That's where we're at at the moment. Now, before we actually put the, the dress on, the main event, I want to build up this shoulder area a bit because we've not got much going on here it's a little bit wobbly at the moment and I'm just going to tighten that make sure that pipe cleaner is as tight as you can get it there we go that's better because these arms are going to bend down like so so what I'm going to do the white wool that we've been using I've just got a, a long thin strip here that's about 30 centimeters but it doesn't have to be that long it doesn't matter it's not going to be seen I'm just going to decide, I think, 
if we pull these down first so these bits here spread them out and then pull them down around the face and you see and so what you've done now is you've covered up all those lumps and bumps probably should have done this before I put the arms on might have been easier but it doesn't matter and then I'm just going to take a wisp of wool or if you've got a bit of string that would work as well just tie that around there just to secure it and pull it tight Terry loves the way you do the head yeah thanks terry and eric says good instruction oh thanks Erica. Nice compliments. Oh. right so you can see now so you've got that wrap round. you probably sh i probably should have done that before the arms actually i got a bit carried away with myself there so if you you are on catch up that might be the best way to do it but it, it doesn't matter and so as, as you can see now all those imperfections that you may have had or not had have disappeared and just pull it down just pull that wool down so you've got it nice and secure you don't want any baggy bits pull that down and most of this is not going to be visible only the th about a third which is going to be the front of the face is going to be seen so it doesn't matter and then have a look decide which is your best side and you can actually turn those arms round I think I'm going to go with this side because the rest is going to be covered in hair and curls. There we go. Okay. Right. So we're going to take that piece of wool. And we're now just going to bulk up these shoulders. So just pop it over the shoulders like a shawl. Cross them over at the front. Come around the back. There's no particular way of doing this. So you come around the back, cross them over again, come over the front of the shoulders, cross them over again, any way works, and then just wrap it round. Back over again. So you're just weaving in and around the arms just to, to bulk them up. There we go. And then just use your needle very carefully so you don't break it on the wire that's why it's good to use um, a more solid felting needle like the 36 or the 38 because they can um, they can withstand sort of catching the wire if you use something like a 40 it's going to bend and break really easily so that's what you're going to end up with and then your arms are here Kirsty's asking how firm is the head the head is um well the outside's quite soft but the inside is quite firm um it's it springs back to shape really easily and then if you want to if you find that this is a little bit loose you can just go down to where the neck is and just felt it down avoid the face area because you don't want to put any marks in there you want to keep it nice and and fresh And use your needle at a diagonal angle. And you can tease any, any areas around as well. I've got my girl here tonight helping me. That's who you can hear in the background. Um, she's helped me with all your questions. The mysterious voice. The mysterious voice, my lovely girl. there we go so your head will look something like that it may be bigger it may be smaller it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter at all and then what you'll have is this excess wool here and then you will have wrapped some wool around the shoulders and around the back in any which way it doesn't matter there's no right or wrong way to do it all you want to do is just make sure you've got a little bit of bulk on these shoulders so that when we actually pop the dress over 
um, it's got something to hold on to and it's sort of not slipping down. You don't need to felt any of that, just nice and loose, that's absolutely fine. So again, you can just keep working the head if you need to. Pull it, if it's really loose, just use your fingers and pull it down towards the neck. Thank you, Anna. Anna says I'm doing a fine job. Oh, yes, she is. So I'm just working this more than I would normally, but I'm just giving people a chance to catch up a little bit. Um, if you've got any questions or you're stuck with anything, just, just make sure you pop something in the comments. Um, they'll all be answered. There's no more fairy wool packs in the shop. They sold out um, oh, last week. Um, I might put some back on after Christmas. We shall see. And this will probably be a kit next year as well. There we go. So I'm just tucking everything in. I'm messing about more than I normally would. Like I say, just want to make sure that you're all catching up. And there we go. That's it. We've got a question from Tracy asking if you ever do 2D needle felting or do you just stick with 3D? Um, yeah, 2D. I'm not sure if you can see. Or you can't see behind me at the moment because obviously the camera's down. But there's some... Um, uh, there's a picture behind me. I'm going to do a picture tutorial in the new year, a needle felted picture, sort of painting with wool. Um, there is a tutorial on the blog. I have a brilliant blog. It's the ultimate needle felting guide and it really absolutely is. Um, you can find anything needle felting related on there. It has a brilliant blog post about wools what wools to use, what they work with, what they don't work with. It talks about core wool. Anyone confused about core wool? Core wool is just what you use in the middle of your project. It's not a specific type of wool. It's what you use. And it's usually if you are doing something like this and you've got all these nice top coats, the, the coloured wools, the dyed wools and, and all these sort of silks and things are quite expensive. So you want well, more expensive. So you want to use sort of a cheap core wool um, for the middle. So let's say the, the Jacob wool tops inexpensive, carded wool. Um, I have some loose core wool that I use as well, which is like for soft sculptures, like the like the snowmen. So they've got a really soft core center. So don't get confused. But if you want to know more about wools, then pop over to the Lincolnshire Fen Crafts blog. Uh, and you will find all sorts going on there. Tutorials, um, information, wools, felting needles, tools, accessories. Um, it's, I'm, I'm really, really proud of it, to be honest. It's, um, it's, it's doing really well. Um, I'm, I'm pretty thrilled with it. Um, so yeah, get yourself over there. You'll kill a few hours. Okay, right, so I think it must be time to pop the dress on. Any questions coming in? Um, Fiona's asking, what's the blog called again? Uh, Lincolnshire Fen Crafts blog. There you go. <laughs> if you put needle felting blog into Google or whatever search engine you're using, it usually comes up. Uh, and Karen's husband says, Cornwall is a county in the south of England. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite funny, actually. There's always one <laughs> or two. Okay, whatever colour you've got, I think the packs I sent out, it was blue, aqua, coral, and um, a really nice sort of fuchsia pink. Um, I'm going to go with purple tonight, because I know my girl likes this colour. And this might be, this might, don't tell her, but it might be a Christmas gift. Um, there we go. So, it's quite long, so I'm just going to shorten it a little bit. If you're going to make two, um, split it in half. And remember what I said earlier on, keep your hands apart and just pull that wool gently away. Can you see how that just pulls away? Now, if you did that with your hands close together, those fibers just lock. Wool is, is an amazing, amazing natural fiber. Um, so, and that's why, because those, those um, interlocking fibers just grab hold of each other. So I'll go with this slightly longer bit. 
So pop your fairy head and body to one side and then just lay your wool for your dress on your mat. We're not going to be felting anything here so you don't need lots of room it's just what we're going to be doing is we're going to be laying the fibres that we want to see and then we're going to be just making a little gap in the middle with our fingers to pop it over the head. So lay that down. Now I think I'm going to add some of this nice fuchsia as well but I'm going to have that shorter so that it comes um, much higher than the the lilac that I've got here. So I'm going to lay that there and then I think I've got some nice white silk here. If you've got the wool packs you'll have all sorts of silks in there. Um, you'll definitely have the white silk so I'm just going to take this out pop that in there and I'm just seeing if I've got anything else I've got some throasters waste but I don't think I'll use that uh, what have I got here Ooh, I might add that afterwards just a bit of yarn that I found and I've got another bit of silk here which is like a sort of pink pinky silk that there okay so lay everything out spread it out a little bit and then just pick it up hold it in the center and just pull apart a little hole like so so your fingers just pop through don't make it too big and then just pop that over the head push it through, you can make it bigger if you need to as you go, pop the head through and pull that down, there we go. So you should have something like this. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to take some white wool, just the wool that you used for the head just a thin piece and I'm going to wrap that close up to the top where the shoulders are around the body and around the back and pull it in tight keep your hands close together because this is where you don't want the wool to pull apart so keep your hands close together and then you can actually pull that really quite tightly can you see what you've done there so pull that tightly and then tie a knot Angela would like to know where she can buy the white silk the white silk I'm not sure where I got that from actually um, there's lots of independent sellers on Etsy and on Google, if you just put in um, white silk fiber, uh, World of Wool, I think, sell it. They sell some really nice fibers. Um, they've got all the silks, I believe. So um, yeah, if you just if you just sort of Google that, you'll be able to you'll be able to find it. I might stock some in the shop next year. I'll see see how I get on. Okay, so as you can see, it's it's looking a bit a bit big. You know, we've got a, we've got some eighties style effect going on here now if you like that that's fine but my arms are a bit lost and I kind of want to to see more of them so all you do take your needle and just use that just push in those arms those sleeves and just felt to that excess wool that's underneath you know how we built up those shoulders well that was one of the reasons why we did it so that we could just attach these arms on the same side again just push in and then go to the back pull any fibers down but that's about all it needs it doesn't need any more than that now what you can do here if this has come a bit low you can actually pull those sides keep your hands close close to that waist because you don't want to pull wool off so you want to keep that nice and tight and can you see 
how that dress puffs out. And at the back here. And then what you can also do is, this is a really good um, tip to use a needle, you can actually bring all those fibres down, use your needle and you create these lovely wisps that just sort of flow with the wool to give it that sort of that gown effect. And then go around to the front. Can you see how this is all sort of scrunched up? Well, what we can do is we just use our needle just to gently pull them down. And look at that, you can see all those all those different coloured fibres look really nice. Oh, that looks really good actually, I'm quite pleased with that. And you see you've just got that, that streak of, of white silk coming through. I was going to add some locks, but to be honest with you, I don't think I need any. And then you can just save these, losing these ends, just twizzle at the bottom and it just mats these, these fibres together a little bit and stops them going astray. Pull off any loose. Everyone's loving it. Oh, brilliant. Can you see? How nice does that look? Well, that went pretty well. Better than I expected. <laughs> and then if you want to just secure that belt, just go through the back and just felt it through a few times and then that will stop it moving about now. But don't do it until you get to this point because, you know, you want it to be able to adjust it. And again, you can either have that, you can maybe, if it's long enough, you could tie it in a bow. You could maybe add a ribbon if you wanted to um, later on. And then I'm just going to use my needle just to tease that out so it, it disappears. There we go. And again, just pull that out. And then you see how gorgeous that is. Turn it around that way. There we go. So pretty. And again, just grab that. There we go. Okay, so hopefully you're getting on all right with this. Um, have you, I'm hoping you've all managed your dresses all right if you are up to that point. But don't worry, like I said, don't rush it. The worst thing you can do is try and rush it, you know, because it's lovely wool and you don't want to spoil all your hard work. Just come back to the, the replay, which will be available as soon as um, I've finished, and then I'll probably get it on YouTube tomorrow. So there we go. So I think now we're going to put some hair on. Now, if you've got the wool packs, you will have these really beautiful locks here. This is Art Yarn. Um, the lady who, who does this is um, Sarah from Highland Colours. She has a website and she's also on Etsy. And she is amazing. You will have either the white, you might have some pink or some blue locks, depending on which wool pack you ordered. She actually plant dyes all of her wool locks. She's amazing. And then she spins them into this incredible art yarn. I'm just addicted to it. Um, and I'm always finding uses for it. I think one of my, uh, two, three of my needle felting kits use this wool for the sheep, um, pink, blue, and a peach uh, sheep needle felting kit, and they're absolutely, they just look amazing. So Highland Colours, she's amazing. Great. She's a whiz with the plant dyes. And she, I think she, she grows her own plants as well, and she, she forages for them. So it's, it's all really, really nice, natural, uh, natural, wool and um, plant dyes that she uses. Right, so either take your curly wool or if you don't have the curly wool or you want to use straight wool then you can also just use your wool tops, your roving. You see there I've just popped those on top of the head and then I've just plaited them and tied them with a bit of um, wool top here. So that looks really nice as well. And this sparkle here, that's Angelina Fibre, which is really, really cute. Uh, gets everywhere, but it's really nice. And that's just some natural white locks. I think that's Wensleydale. And then I've got some uh, 
from Silk Throaster's Waist here, which is very sort of cobwebby, and that's really nice as well. Um, I've got some white Throaster's Waist here, so if you wanted to, if you just wanted to add, add an extra sort of dimension to the dress, then you can always pop something like that on. But I think I'm just going to keep mine, mine nice and plain. Okay, so whatever you're using, I'm just going to unravel this. Um, you can put them on strand by strand, but what I tend to do is, uh, if you're using wallets, I tend to sort of just wrap it up like so. And then if you hold it in the middle, you've kind of got that, that going on. And then just trim off. Then all I do is just pop that on the head in one piece, like so. Hold on, either side. I've lost my needle. Oops, it's underneath the throaster's waist. And then just go down the middle and push that in. Just be careful, you'll have a wire at the top of the head there. So just be careful you don't break needle on that. And it only needs to be, it doesn't need to be on too firmly, just so it holds pretty well. And you'll end up with this, it looks kind of messy at the moment. And you'll have um, these loops. And you do exactly the same if you are using a wool top. Again, just pop it on and then just felt down the middle and down the back. Okay, and then you, you can see if you're using this uh, your art yarn or curly wool, you see you've got these loops here and we'll, we'll snip those. It makes me so nervous when you're doing it in your hand like that. Does it? Mary's getting nervous because I'm holding it. There we go. And then what you do, it just saves a lot of time doing it this way. If you want to do it separately, strand by strand, that's absolutely fine. But I like to look for time saving methods. So get your scissors and just snip through those loops, find the loop. Mary, in that second drawer down, can you pass me the pink art yarn? I'll put some in just for contrast. You probably have some long bits there. Leave them long, don't cut them because you don't want to waste it. You see what's going on here. It's all a little bit mad. Um, no, it's the cur. Oh, sorry, top. Yeah, that one. That's that's the one. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Pop that in there, and then this long bit here. I'm just going to felt that back in there. There we go, and then I kind of leave my things a bit, the hair a bit wild. That's loop. And then what I'm going to do here, I've got this this nice pink yarn as well. So I'm just going to cut some little strands. and pop those in for contrast. Mindy's also addicted to Sarah's art yarn. She says she can't find anything like it here in the US. Yeah, the, the, it's it's amazing. I think she's been very busy lately because I keep mentioning her in the tutorials. Um, There we go. And then if it's all a bit wild, then you can just go down the head a little bit and just felt it down. I kind of want these pink bits to sort of stay sticking up, I think. But there we go. And then just round the back, 
pull it down and again it's looking a bit raggy at the moment but we'll soon tidy that up If you've got any really long bits rather than trimming them fold them over just because it's such nice yarn I mean you'll always find a use for it somewhere anyway if you cut the bits off you just pop them in again and then get this going on and then what you can do is just go around if you want to and just trim it to an equal sort of length and then these bits that we're trimming off we'll use those to fill in any gaps there we go and then we'll pop these shorter bits up here because I like these little sticky out bits at the top so I usually go back and just pop those in. There we go. So it's all gone a bit mad there. And then I'm just going to I'll give mine a bob, which I quite like. It's a bit fluffy there, so get rid of that. And there we go. Okay, so there we are, hair is on. You can titivate that as much as you like, mess about with it, take it off, start again. But I'm just gonna leave mine like that. And I've just noticed, just got a little gap there. So I'm just gonna pull that wool over on the head. That's it. I'm just gonna push that up off the face a little bit, right. Okay, so now um, you can leave your fairy just, just with, without any detail on like that, which is probably what you see mostly. Um, but I like to have a little bit of detail on the face, so I am going to add some detail. Now, if you have a wool pack, you will have this sort of light, sort of mid-brown carded wool in there. Um, I like to use brown for the eyes because I think black's a bit harsh. So that's why I like to go for, for a brown. And to create just the suggestion of a nose, we're going to go back to that white again and use that. So you want a tiny piece of brown, pop it to one side, and then this tiny piece of white that we're going to use for the nose. Now, this is just a suggestion of a nose. We don't want any harsh lines. We don't want to spoil that face. So all you're going to do, in fact, that's probably too much. So I'm going to take a little bit off. If you look on here, you can see it's just a little, a little bump of a nose. Take the wool and just pop it in your hand and just roll it gently just till it starts to mat up you can also do that in your in between your fingers okay keep one end really loose because um, that is going to be sort of blended into the face and then just roll a little bit firmer between your fingers and you see so you're sort of creating a little seed shape Can you see that? So you've got a really loose end and then you've just firmed this up here. Pop that in the middle of the face. So you've got your loose end here going up towards the head, up towards the hair and this loose bit here and you're just going to felt that in and under so you're creating a kind of soft curve
and just felt that in and under and then felt these wispy bits in really gently they're going to sort of disappear and then we're just going to be left with this almost almost just a suggestion of a nose it doesn't want to be the main event it just sort of wants to be there because your eyes will will fill in the rest and I'll actually pop that up there under the hairline see that It's almost barely there. And then you can use your fingers if you want to just shape it as well. Your hands are amazing tools. And just use that needle diagonally as you just push it up the head because you want, you don't want to see that, you want it just to disappear. And then just jiggle it about a bit and there we go that's it now if it's not right and it probably won't be the first time pull it off and do it again now this brown this light brown i've got here when i say a tiny piece i mean a really really tiny piece however small you're thinking think smaller so that's all I've got there and roll that you don't want to felt this because you're going to you want it loose so that when you actually pop it onto the face it disappears into the face and becomes smaller so it's just a small piece of wool and you're just going to pop that there you might want to hold it with your finger or it might pop straight in but just push straight down through the middle and can you see as I push that through the middle it's disappearing that wool is being drawn into the head so you're actually reducing the size and then you've got that really neat circle so don't try and make a neat circle with it before you start you'll create that as you work and if it's a bit close you can move it but there we go I'm not going to mess with that because I think that's quite good I'm quite impressed with that myself normally I have to do it two or three times now here we go let's try and match it up so we've got matching eyes that are not different sizes so again just roll it gently in your fingers or in the palm of your hand you're just matting it together gently you're not felting that and then you're going to pop that on the face other side of the nose just check you can see that there go this way hold it with your finger if you need to be careful with that needle and then just once it's grabbed just continue to push down and can you see how that reduces in size still a little bit big compared to the other one that's better there you can see now that's still a bit big so I'm going to pull in those edges and push it in again and if you've lost the eye if it's sort of sunk into the face a little bit because parts of the face are really soft then just go around the outside of the eye and just move those bits with your needle and if you've got a lot of loose wool that's sort of covering the eye you can actually just go over and trim but don't cut into the face and then just move it out the way with the needle so there we go I think that's as close as I'm going to get it for now so can you see you've got that nice sort of little little nose and the eyes are now on and then I love to have some pink cheeks and a few freckles. So all I'm using, don't, uh, honestly, if, if you put pink wool on there, you're just going to end up with lines. Um, uh, I just love to use blusher, like proper blusher, just out of the makeup box. So all I've got here is some blusher and um, a, a small paintbrush makeup brush will do and then I just rub a little bit of blusher on and then just move that around on the cheek and can you see how cute is that
and then other side and it's in the same place there we go rosy cheeks and then for the freckles I have found the best thing to use is I've got this brown sharpie but if you've just got a brown felt tip will do and just dab it on quickly and then bring it straight off and you see how lovely that looks and I'm just just going to bring the arm up again And then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just bend those hands up. You see, just bend them up. And then you've got that nice, elegant finish. I've, that dress is just overlapping those arms a little bit much. I think I've lost some arms. That's why I said, if, you've got, if you're doing a bigger fairy, then you might want to use two pipe cleaners for the arms, but just sort of half... Of one of them so overlap them so you don't want two full lengths otherwise they're too long and you see okay and there we are any questions Mary no yeah, everyone okay this is a yeah great idea yeah I hope everyone's getting on okay um I hope that was nice and simple to do the face and we are just almost ready for the wings if you've decided to go with wings I'm just felting this hair down because I didn't quite do it enough earlier. Time is it? Um, seven. Seven o'clock. Oh, we've done well. We've got a lot done in an hour. I'm pretty impressed with that. So you just go over, have a little look, make sure you're happy with it. You can come back later. And... Um, change any bits you're not happy with I looks a bit wonky but never mind nothing in life is ever perfect and there we go so she is ready for her wings okay so quick easy way to make the wings again the white wool that we started with we're just going to pull off not too long just a nice piece about that long which is about 15 centimeters again and then we're going to take a thin piece of the white wool like so and we're going to wrap it in the middle and then immediately we've got both wings ready to be felted turn that around the other side again That's nicely knotted and then you can just those ends can just become part of the the wings now you could if you wanted to just leave it at that just maybe twizzle the ends and that would actually work as a set of wings however they're not going to stand the test of time they're not going to take much handling at all and you want to be able to bring this out every Christmas and and, and not worry about all of this loose wool. You want it to last as long as possible. So, we're just going to felt these wings. So twizzle those ends, and we will probably tuck those in as well. So you've got that nice, almost like a sort of bow tie shape there. Got it tied in the middle. So that way we know as well that each wing is gonna be pretty equal because we're using the same piece of wool separated in the middle so it's so much easier i think doing it this way than doing two separate wings so lay that on your mat if you're using foam i'll pop it on here just so you can see 
Now you might want to use a couple of needles for this to speed up the process, although one is absolutely fine. You don't need any fancy tools. I have got a couple here that are just tied with an elastic band, but you might have some multi-tools that you want to use. Or you may just have a, a, a single needle holder, which makes it a little bit more comfortable. And then you just start to felt. And only go into the very top of your mat. There is no need to be pushing right through the mat. I get um, a lot of people asking me, how do I stop the foam from going into my work? Well, firstly, you shouldn't be pushing it. You should only be going through to the top. Um, secondly, use a, a, a quite a, a firm piece of foam. This is upholstery foam. So it's a lot firmer and it doesn't break up. But what you can also do is lay a piece of felt on top and do it that way, which will prolong the life of your foam um, massively. And you can do it that way. And then the other thing is not to felt for too long before you turn it over. So we'll do one wing at a time. And then it's just come a bit loose there. So let's just tidy this up. I'm going to twizzle that and then I'm going to fold it over and felt it there. Don't worry about the shape, we're going to create that as we go. Now can you see what I'm doing here with my needle? I'm pulling this wool in so those edges become really neat. You've already got the shape, you don't need to worry about that. Now it's just about firming it up and reducing it. So I'm just going to peel that off so that I don't felt the wool into the felt that's underneath and I'm going to carry on. Now if you have one of these bad boys which is the punch tool, it's got seven needles on, this is amazing. Always use your piece of felt on top of your rice mat if you're doing it this way, it, otherwise you will, you will destroy your rice mat quite quickly. Um, if you get the mats from me I always put the foam in for you, uh, the felt in for you so you've got that piece with the mats. This is amazing. Um, it's also brilliant if you want to teach kids flat felting and you're worried about their fingers because it's got this guard on. So as you can see, so as you push down, that guard pushes down as well. But if you make, if you if you're doing a picture or you're doing um, bunny ears, I use this for hair ears. Um, or if you're doing a lot of flat felting, if you're doing flowers, then this just speeds it up massively. Can you see how quickly that works? And you get a really nice, even, neat finish. And you can even use, just use it to fold over those edges. I know a few of you have probably got these. I think um, if you've been on one of my workshops, I usually take them with me, so you've probably got them. Cindy wants to know if you have any rice mats made to sell again yet. Um, I'm trying desperately to get the Hessian, so I haven't got any at the moment. I've just um, I've I've put one aside for Terry because I promised her one, and I've just found um, enough for probably about six mats that I'll make over the uh, probably next week. So there'll be a few in the shop next week, but the woman who I get my Hessian from, um, she just can't get this particular Hessian, and I've had some new samples and they're just not right. So I'd rather than sell something that isn't going to last, I'd rather just not have them in the shop until I can get the Hesse in again. But as soon as it comes in, um, it will be listed. Because I, I make them myself. So, you know, I get the Hesse in and then make them myself. So can you see how that is now firming up? And so that's going to stand the test of time rather than something just loose and wispy like this. That is just going to just going to be able to be brought out of the Christmas box year after year. So then we go over to the other side, fold that over, just felt it in, and use your needle if you're using a single needle, just to bring in those edges, and just aim for something that's roughly the same size and shape, but don't be precious over it because it's impossible to get them exactly the same. 
So you can see a single needle is perfectly adequate. You don't need any fancy equipment, but if you decide that felting is for, needle felting is for you and you're going to be doing a lot of felting and particularly sort of if you do like hair ears and, and wings and pictures and anything that you need to flat felt with, then I would definitely get one of these. And um, this isn't a clover, but it's exactly the same as the clover and probably about half the price. So you don't need to, to buy the name brands either. And they all come from the same place. They're all made in either Hong Kong or China. Sharon made a rice mat from a Holland and Barrett bag to tidy over. Oh, well done. Which Sharon's that? Um, oh, Sharon Eames. Eames. Oh, yeah. Well done, Sharon. Yeah, like I said, shopping bags are brilliant. They're really good. I think the first one I made was it was a, a Tesco shopping bag. Right, there we go. So that's felting nicely. And you see, I've just used a single needle for that. Still needs a bit of work. So I'm going to just quickly click on with this. Are many on, uh, of you actually doing the wings at the moment? Give me a thumbs up, just let me know so I can sort of see where people are at. And there we go, see how that's coming in nicely. And you can almost as well now, we can start to create some shape. You can, either, you can leave them like that if you wish. But what you can also do is take your needle, keep it flat, keep your fingers apart, and you can just use that needle to push in to the edge of that wing. And what it does is you can create that shape. You see what that's done? Got this lovely soft curve here. And again, you put your fingers flat, and you just gently poke through into the side of the wing, just in one area. And can you see how you've got that lovely shape? I mean, if you're doing leaves, petals for flowers, these techniques work for, for all of those things. And then I'll just flip that over, I'll do this side. So go to the other petal, sorry, the other wing. We've got quite a few people that are on the wings. Oh, well done. Excellent. And Angela got lost on the head, so you can catch up on the replay. Yeah. And of course, Anna's making angel wings, not fairy ones. Oh, right. Okay. Well, yes. Angels. You've got, you've got to be different. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Can you see how lovely that shape is? Actually, they're probably my best wings I've done. I'm quite impressed with those. And then if you wanted to, you can leave it like that, but if you wanted more of a point here, or you wanted to just tidy up some loose wool, then you can just twizzle. It's amazing what you can do with a bit of twizzling when it comes to needle felting. You can just twizzle, and then on the side that you're not going to see, or the back of it, you can just pull that over, that twizzle bit, and just felt it in. And then if you've got any strands that you can't get rid of, you can just trim those off. And there we go. And I've got a bit of loose wool there, so I'm just going to work that in a little bit more. Now you can leave these plain if you want, or you can add a little bit of texture or a little bit of colour. Um, what have we got here? Where is the silky silk? Ah, there it is. So I've just got this pretty pink silk here. I'm just going to lay a little bit on there. I'm going to hold it at the centre there. 
and then I'm just going to use my fingers just to spread that out I'm really not going to do a lot with this because I don't want to leave sort of lines in it so just gently very gently almost just press the needle onto it just for it to hold and you can see you've got that nice contrast a little bit on the other side they don't both have to be the same I never try and get things um, equal unless it's something like the eyes there we go and then this is silk throasters waste so I'm just going to pop a little bit of this on I think can you see how it's that cobwebby effect this is just something out of my sort of embellishment stash box and just lay that over but it's quite nice yeah so if you want this um if you just um google silk throasters waste and you will find it i'm not sure if it was angela who got some i don't know where angela got hers from i can't quite remember where i got mine from it's a lady on etsy I'll try and put it in the description. I'll try and put a link in the description for the uh, Silk Throaster's Waste. But there we go. So can you see that texture I've got going on there? Quite nice. And that's it. So there's your wings done. So then we go back to our fairy or our angel. There's lots of bits in the back here. And then pop those quite high up. You don't want to be sort of around the waist, sort of in between the back and the waist. And all you do is just, in fact, I'm just going to turn those round, I think, so we can see that colour from the front. So I've got the plain side at the back. And you just push through with the needle just till it's held on it doesn't need to be too firm just so it doesn't drop off and I'm just going to shape those a little bit and then maybe just going to put them a bit higher so I'm just going to felt in here the bottom of this wing just so that can you see how that's holding up now it was just a bit low so that's where it was and then so if you just pull it up just hold it and just push through with your needle just so it catches it's lifted them up mess with the hair just push that hair back a little bit And there you have your Christmas fairy. You see that? And you see how much firmer those wings are rather than just leaving them loose. You're gonna be able, like I say, you're gonna be able to wrap it up. Make sure you wrap it up when you put it away. Um, you know, just wrap it in a bit of newspaper or, or in, in, a, in a paper bag or some tissue paper so it's, uh, and just sort of keep it separate. Don't chuck it in with the rest of the stuff like I do. Um, you know, keep it in a special box and you will be able to bring that out every Where's year. Oh, is that Donna? Yeah. Ghost Donna. Oh, hi. Yes. Oh, hello. Hi. And that's our, I think that's our post lady Donna. She's amazing. My, she brings my bins in as well. Um, and she has Freya and Jasmine, who uh, her daughters, who are really into crafts. Um, so hopefully, um, uh, make sure they send us some pictures, Donna. Love to, yeah, send me your pictures. Pop your pictures in the comments. It'd be great to see what you're doing. If you've got any now, that'd be even better. So we can all see where everyone's at. Um, but pop your pictures in the comments, um, so I can have a look through them because that's my favourite bit. So there we go. Let's have a look. Right, so I'm going to flip up the phone again.
Hello. <laughs> oh, how can you hang it up? Okay, you don't even need, bear with me one second. Just grab a bit of yarn. A bit of yarn, whatever you've got. Tie it in a knot. And you don't even need to stitch this on. So just tie it in a knot. Have you ever tried to tie a knot under pressure? <laughs> okay, so that's my knot. And then just find a spot in the head where you want it to go. And just felt it down. Like I said not even a, a little bit of sewing involved in this. And there you have your hanging fairy or angel. Really, really simple. So I hope you all enjoyed that. I've done quite well actually. How am I doing for time? You've got 10 minutes. Oh, 10 minutes? Wow, I thought I was going to go over time. I normally do. Ask Anna. Ask the ladies who come to my workshops. <laughs> Always plan an extra hour. Um, it's usually because of the cake breaks though. Anna makes the most amazing homemade cakes. Um, well, that's brilliant everyone. Yeah, you're all so welcome. So I hope you all really enjoyed that. I hope it's got you in the, the festive mood. Um, and and just um, enjoy doing it. It's, it. it's Craft should not be stressful. Remember, it's it's all about you and what you get out of it. It doesn't matter what the finished result is is like, as long as you enjoy doing it. And it's it, it just reduces the stress level so much because you don't think about anything else. All you're thinking about is is what you're doing and what's in front of you. Um, so yeah, pop over to YouTube. There's loads of stuff on there, and then the Linkage of N Crafts blog, the Needle Felting blog. Loads of stuff going on there for you to keep you busy over Christmas. I'm always on hand for advice. If you get stuck with anything, so you can message me or email me. The um, contact form and email address is on the website and the website links in the description if you want to pop across and have a look and, um, and see what there is. But um, thank you so much for coming. I want you all to have an amazing Christmas. Stay safe, obviously. Um, look after yourselves. Look after each other. Um, big love and thanks to everyone who supports me throughout the whole year. My newsletter people are amazing. Facebook, Instagram, um, the blog people. You're all amazing and I really can't thank you enough for all that you do to support me. So it's amazing. Take care and um, I'll see you soon. Merry Christmas.